welcome. My name is Eileen, and I work with a small team based out of Los Angeles, California, to help design the prizes that the X Prize Foundation launches. And we have a saying around the X Prize Foundation. I'll tell you a little bit more about what we do and how we do it. But it's a, a driver for keep, what keeps us up at night and what keeps us motivated. And we say, the day before something is a breakthrough, it's a crazy idea. It's an absolutely crazy idea, and you might not have been able to see it if you weren't listening and if you weren't paying attention. And at the X Prize Foundation, we launch incentivized competitions with lots of money behind them, a million, 10 million, 30 million dollars, to try to get a team of like-minded individuals to create those breakthroughs. But the difference, again, between a breakthrough and a crazy idea is very small. And if you are not watching, sometimes it can go by very quickly. So at our foundation, we look for those inflection points, the point in time when things will move from something that's ludicrous to something that's going to change your life. But I'm going to have to be the bearer of some bad news here. Because you all, like me, are accustomed to thinking in a very linear and a very local way. But don't take it personally. It's pretty much as a result of our evolutionary history because that's the way things used to be. They used to be the same. You never traveled more than a few days outside of your hometown. In fact, you never really knew more than about 150 people. That's actually a scientific number, and for all of those of you who have 1,000 friends on Facebook, you're also probably only interacting with about 150 of them. We don't think in terms of exponential, we think in terms of linear. And that's a big problem today, because today, the world is global and the world is exponential. And a lot of people try to understand what exponential feels like. And let me help you take a walk with me there for a moment. Eric Schmidt, the ex-CEO of Google, gave a speech a few years ago where he talked about the growth of information and what exponential really meant. And what he said is that from the beginning of time until about 2003, the world created about five exobytes of data. An exobyte, and I had to look it up, is about a a billion gigabytes, huge. And in 2010, we created that same amount of information in a few days. And in, by 2013 and 2014, we're going to create that in a matter of minutes. Now, well, it's one thing to have a lot of information, but it's another thing to know what to do with it. And so when we talk about global, when we talk about exponential, think of it this way. If I took 30 steps linearly, guess where I'd get? One, two, three, I'd get to 30. If I took 30 steps exponentially, I'd go 26 times around the Earth. That's not something we can fathom, and that's something at the X Prize that we try to change. We try to think in exponential terms and to pick that point where things go from what we think is linear to a change in exponential growth. And the, the history of the foundation actually got started with this gentleman, Charles Lindbergh. He was the first person to fly nonstop from New York to Paris. And he actually did this, not just because he woke up and decided to do it one day, but because someone offered him a prize. It was a $25,000 prize purse for the first person to go nonstop from New York to Paris. And all that's a great story, and there's a lot of lessons there. What really mattered is that when Lindbergh completed that, he changed the way people thought about what it meant to travel. That was the inflection point of change. And when that happened, a year later, the number of passengers on an airline went from 6,000 to 300,000 in a few years' time. The number of airports tripled, and it basically became the dawn of a multi-billion dollar industry we know today as the commercial aviation industry. And the X Prize take that concept, that concept of creating change in a moment and creating a whole new universe, and we want to try to repeat that. So in 2004, well, actually in 1996, we launched our first X Prize. It was a $10 million competition for the first privately financed team to build a spaceship and take it 100 kilometers above the Earth's surface and do that twice in two weeks. Pretty clear set of metrics. Note to self. It was originally 100 miles, but we had to lower it because it was a little too hard, and we figured the Americans won't know the difference anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and in 
And when this happened, and when it was won in 2004, a private commercial spaceflight industry was born. We changed the way people thought about space travel, that it wasn't just for governments anymore, it was for us. And that one day we could buy a ticket and go to the moon. And we're taking this concept outside of space. Oops, back. We're taking it to today's world. We recently launched a competition that was just won in September called the Wendy Schmidt Oil Cleanup X Challenge. This challenge challenged teams to come up with a way to clean up oil from the ocean sea surface at two and a half times the capacity that was available in the market. When the Gulf oil spill happened in April of last year, we were still using 1989 technology to clean up the ocean oil. We thought something should change, and we launched a competition to make that happen. And the winner developed a solution that was two and a half times the value of the current industry standard and revolutionized how we respond to things like oil spill. We're looking into healthcare. We have a prize called the Archon Genomics X Prize. It's a prize to sequence 100 human genomes in 30 days or less with a level of validation and a level of accuracy that we could bring a clinical grade human genome sequencing into the market. We want to see the era of exponential personalized medicine, and we think this is a place to start, that inflection point that can get us from crazy idea to amazing new market. We also have a third competition called the Google Lunar X Prize. Pretty simple competition. All you have to do is build a robot, put it on the moon, have it roam about 500 meters, and then send video and other digital images back to Earth. We want to open up space and planetary exploration like NASA had, only for us. We know that there's interesting things to learn out there, and if we, as a, as a humanity, cannot get there on our own, we need to make that happen. But as I said, the X-Prize is about taking crazy ideas and creating breakthroughs, creating new markets out of those crazy ideas. And we're here to talk not just about what's happened, but about what's next. What will the next X-Prize be? How will we create the next set of markets? So I'm going to run through a couple of things that, we're, that are on our minds. One question, why do we have to have a doctor to diagnose us? Our cell phones are smarter than ever before. Why can't we use mobile technology to bring about precision medicine to a consumer and to a consumer handheld device. What if we launch a competition for the first team, $10 million, to, to identify 15 distinct disease states in a pool of people? Why do we think carbon is bad? What if we could put CO2 and turn it from a negative to a positive, from a liability to an asset? And we're considering launching a prize to recover carbon dioxide from a coal-fired plant stack and actually convert that to a useful product, not letting it pollute our atmosphere, but turning it into something valuable, changing the way we think about breakthroughs. Today, we all know about fortified foods. We have iodine in our salt, fortified cereals. But micronutrients are the single largest impact we can have on global hunger. Many, many millions of people don't get basic nutrition through micronutrients and fortified products. What if we could challenge a team to develop a fortified food staple that could actually result in a third reduction in something like anemia or folic acid, folic acid lacking? 100,000 people are on the wait list for an organ. What if we could incent a team to design from a stem cell, from a patient's own stem cell, one organ and have it live at least six months with full functionality? How could we change the way people think about what's possible and how we can incent those markets? Today, paralysis is a life sentence. What if we could actually change that and, and award a prize purse to a team that could bring a formerly paralyzed person and have them win a competition with Dancing with the Stars? To actually eliminate the need for wheelchairs through technology and to do that and create a new market behind it. What if we could actually explore our oceans? You know, we know more about the surface of Mars than we do about their own oceans. What if we could grant a prize for a first team to circumnavigate the ocean autonomously and collect data along that way, help us understand what's going down beneath the deep? And we've heard about some autonomous vehicles and autonomous cars. What if we could bring them to the forefront so it wasn't just on a PowerPoint slide? And we had a New York to Los Angeles race for the first team that could drive a car along that distance autonomously. 
people would stand up and pay attention, and they'd be able to understand the opportunity for that. And we're not going to be on this planet forever. What if we could create an edible organism, something we could take with us when we traveled on missions to Mars, that could survive under standard Martian conditions and actually be an edible substance for us in the future? We could colonize planets that today are not possible because you can't order takeout from space. So, I'd like to close with this: We are not the sole source of great ideas. I'd like you to go home tonight. And when your head hits the pillow, if you had a million dollars or ten million dollars, where would you incent the crazy idea? Where would you take and create a new market? And if it's good, let me know because we'd love to talk with you. So thank you very much.